This is a lecture on superscalar execution for COMP 375 Computer Architecture and Organization at North Carolina A&T State University. Okay, make sure you keep up with the reading. Pipelining uh, has several hazards. The hazards are when there's something that reduces the process ability to pipeline the instructions. There are three flavors of hazards. Resource hazards occur when you can't do something uh, in parallel because there's not enough either processor, not enough ALU, access to memory or other computing resource to do it in parallel. Data hazards occur when the data you need from one instruction is being used by a previous instruction at a time and the result has not been stored. And a control happens with a jump. As you change the flow of execution, the pipeline instructions that have already been picked up and started to be processed will have to be discarded. Pipeline hazards can be resolved by hardware or software. Your Intel processors resolve them by hardware. Any program you give it, if, even if it has uh, hazards, will be executed correctly. It's just if there are hazards, it will slow the pipeline process, making the machine run slower. Uh, there are other processors that assume that the uh, software will take care of hazards. and The compiler has to rearrange the code to avoid hazards. Pipelining is transparent to the high-level programmer. You don't see it at all. The disadvantage, though, is that if you don't know that pipelining exists, you can write inefficient code. The code can be uh, using registers next to each other and cause data hazards or control hazards. Uh, fortunately, the hardware will stall if you do this, and the programs will always be correct. Compilers can rearrange your code and optimize it to avoid the stalls. Here's an example of four uh, Java or C++ executions, where we're just adding some numbers to values. The simple uh, assembler version is shown on the left, where everything's picked up for each instruction one at a time and always uses the same register. On the right, it's much more efficient. Assuming a four-stage pipeline, you notice we use four different registers. By the time we use register one again, it's been four instructions later. And so the four-stage pipeline is no longer concerned about the value in R1. And again, when we store the value in R1, it's four instructions after adding it. So the write back is already completed. Okay, superscalar processors uh, have the ability to execute multiple instructions at the same time. It's an example of micro-parallelism, parallelism that occurs without the programmer having to be aware of it. Basically, as instructions are fetched from the uh, memory, the machine picks up multiple instructions at the same time. If the instructions don't have hazards, if they're not connected in any way, then we'll execute them in parallel. This requires multiple AOUs and multiple execution resources to make it work. But it runs with regular old programs that uh, aren't written for parallelism. It just picks up the instructions, and at any time, if two adjacent instructions can be executed in parallel, it will do so. Uh, the Intel processors have been doing this for some time since the beginning of the Pentium Pro. You've been writing parallel programs all this time and you didn't know it. Superscalar execution happens automatically. Superscalar processors execute just a regular sequence of instructions. Programmer doesn't have to do anything to make the parallelism occur, although it does help if you write instructions that don't have hazards. Uh, all the instructions can be executed independently, and this works for both RISC computers and KISS computers. They, it's an example of micro-parallelism. Macro-parallelism 
is where the programmer has to do something explicit to make the parallelism happen. For instance, you have multi-core or multi-processor systems. The programmer has to create multiple threads to take advantage of that. And the top of this diagram is the pipelining di diagram that we've seen before, where at any one time, the processor is fetching one instruction, decoding another, executing one, and showing the results. Uh, you might have rearranged those and say fetch operand, fetch uh, execution, and result store. But the concept's the same. Uh, so the top is a regular single processor. At the bottom, we have superscalar processing, where we pick up two instructions. We fetch two instructions at once, and then we decode two at once, execute two at once, and save the result. And so at any given time, we'll be executing two instructions in every one of the stages. As the processor fetches and decodes the instruction, it determines if they're hazard-free, whether they can be executed in parallel. If they can be executed in parallel, it will do so. On the other hand, if there's a hazard, it will execute them sequentially. There are some architectures, such as the Intel Itanium, that explicitly define parallel instructions. The Itanium instructions come in bundles of three instructions that are all guaranteed to be hazard-free. The answer is C, twice as fast, because the computer can pick up two instructions and execute them in parallel. Twice as fast is a pretty good improvement. Superscalar execution only works if there are no hazards. The same hazards that slow down pipelining will impact superscalar execution. Uh, Superscalar processors must have multiple ALUs in order for them to execute instructions in parallel. Data hazards can cause superscalar processors to execute instructions sequ sequentially instead of in parallel. In this example, we're changing the value of R1 in the first instruction. So the second instruction needs the correct value with R2 added to it. And so there'll be a stall, a pipeline stall, and it will stop superscalar execution. Most compilers have an option to optimize the code to rearrange it so to avoid uh, pipeline hazards and superscalar execution hazards. Uh, if you generally you have to turn on the option, by default they are turned off. In the C compiler, it's the dash O option for optimize. Be sure to keep up with the reading. Reading a textbook is very important for an online class.